topic for today's webinar is efficient research and approach to publish in high impact journals. And we have Dr. Muhammad Nurani uh, or Pedram, his nickname is Pedram, um, here for this webinar as the speaker. And Pedram is from USM Malaysia. And Dr. Pedram is a senior lecturer at Finance Section School of Management, University of Science Malaysia, USM. In 2017, he completed his PhD in Industrial Economics in Faculty of Economics and Administration, University of Malaya, under Bright Sparks Scholarship, where he gained the University of Malaya Excellence Award 2017, recognized as the best PhD student with the highest impact publications. In 2013, he received his Master of Business Administration, specialized in finance from Multimedia University. And his publications appear in um, high prestigious um, journals, such as Omega, the International um, Journal of Management Science, Economic Modeling, Applied Economics, Singapore Economic Review, Managerial and Decision Economics, Total Quality Management and Business Excellence, and review of managerial science, uh, science and technological and economic development of economy, among others. Okay, thank you, Dr. Said, for inviting me. Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, as Dr. Said said, uh, my name is Mohammad Nurani. You can call me Pedram also, that's my nickname. I was checking the list of participants. I saw uh, Dr. Nawaz Naqabi also, who was my senior PhD comrade. So um, hi to you as well. Uh, okay, so I start sharing my screen and then on the screen, uh, I'll start my presentation. So that would be my desktop. So can you see my desktop now? Like you say, is it? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, we see your okay, screen, great. yep. All right, so. All right, so now I'm closing this one. So let me get rid of it. That's not so, okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, so as Dr. Say said, I completed my PhD in 2017 on the Bright Spot Scholarship. Uh, that was the uh, three years of hard working and then required publication of uh, three, uh, Actually, it was seven. I signed this contract for seven ISIQ1 and Q2, and then later they just reduced it to three. But that was a really hard journey, which uh, I learned a lot uh, in publishing in high impact journals. So, today's session is basically experience sharing. I would like to share my experience, but um, the, the angle that I'm looking into today is a bit different. So, I'm not going to go through uh, what you have to write in the introduction, literature review, and so on. But I'm I'm, I'm just going to give you some tips that uh, can increase the chance of uh, your publication in good journals. The tips that uh, many people, they just ignore and they, they feel that it's not that important for a good um, manuscript to be actually accepted in the good journals. All right, um, so uh, I would like to start with this picture, okay? so. Uh, if you have your phone, you just uh, try to um, scan this QR code, and then, or you can also use your web browser to just go to menti.com, and then there is a quote. So I would like you to put that quote, and then there is a question. So you try to answer for me. If everyone is okay, so you just try to scan this one or use the code 990874. So the question that I'm asking in this picture is that which one of this you feel the appearance, you call it simple. Okay, so the one you see that uh, the guy is just uh, kind of Mm, neat and clean and then the other one is just like not that much good appearing but which one you call it simple that's a question how do you define simplicity 
number one or number two. So we have about 36 participants. Let's get at least 10. So would you please scan this for me? So www.menti.com 990874. Okay, so we got a good number. So I see that half of the participants about uh, they have selected number one. Okay, so half of you are selecting number one as simple and then um, the rest of you are selecting number two as simple. All right, so let me continue. Leonardo da Vinci says that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. But how you define simplicity, that matters. How you define that sophistication. Simplicity is not being just a very normal thing or just not caring about details, okay? Simplicity is like being in a way that it is not so much advanced, but at the same time, it is providing you clear-cut information. So the same applies to the academic writing, okay? So this sentence, the simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, so you don't need to be that much careful about what you're doing, is now being used by lazy people in academia. That's my point, okay? They use this as a justification to get a job as quick as possible, not to be going into detail, not to checking the manuscript in detail, if you're just preparing the manuscript, they, they don't uh, make it really a uh, nice looking manuscript in terms of formatting, in terms of grammatical errors, or whatever that a manuscript has, they don't go deep into that, okay? But let me tell you something, that examiners or reviewers of manuscript, they will look at, at your work the same way, in, even if they also believe in that simplicity that we are calling it, okay? So they don't care. Even if they also not caring about their own manuscript, when it comes to your manuscript, they will be very careful. If you're not, if you have paragraphs that are running here and there, they will take it as a negative point, okay? And it will impact their uh, judgment. So the idea that I'm bringing here is just, we gotta be very careful on the, in the manuscript writing, okay? So being simple isn't banal, it's just elegant. Okay, you gotta be careful in writing and crafting a manuscript. All right, so I start with organizing the manuscript or thesis. Even if you're writing thesis, also the same thing applies. So it doesn't matter thesis or manuscript, both of uh, these two, you have reviewers or examiners, okay? So it's the same thing applies. So first thing first, you have to prepare an outline. How do you prepare the outline? Even if before writing the manuscript, that's what I do all the time. I prepare the outline. That gives me an impression that, okay, I've done a part of the job, so I need to complete the subsections now. Okay, so that gives you the idea on how to plan the manuscript in advance. How you want to put that outline is very important. You have to select the journals that are in your field, okay, let's say if you're doing a management science study, you have to take uh, Omega or management science journals. Those journals must be the target journals of yours. And you have to read those journals, the issues, you have to follow up with the uh, trend that is going on in those journals. So what you do, you go to the journal of your interest in the field, in, in your field, you select the papers that are relevant to your study. You take those papers and you take out the outline of those papers. You translate it into your own research, okay? And then you bring in the outline. You write down the outline in a Word document. When, when you complete that, the next stage is that to prepare the subsections or the paragraphs that you want to write in each section or subsection of yours, okay? So when you want to, because uh, a lot of people, they say, that, okay, what should I write in the introduction? The best approach is those articles that you have selected in the target journals. You have to take them. You have to read them. You have to identify the topic of each paragraph and then translate into your own research. So 
this is the first uh, job, the first uh, manuscript that I wrote earlier in 2014. Uh, for this, I read I read one of the paper, the top paper in the uh, journal of my interest, and I take out the paragraphs, the topic of the paragraphs, okay? And then I selected, okay, so this is the eight paragraphs that I want to write. For each paragraph, what should I write? From the journals, I saw that, let's say that paper, the paper that of my interest was working on the US um, data, and then that one was working on the US, so I said that, okay, so now it's a time for me to write a background in the first paragraph. The second paragraph, paragraph I gotta go to the status of the insurance industry, in my case, for example, in Malaysia, then go to the problem, then uh, for, the, for the next paragraph also, I identify what they have written, and then uh, what should I write for my own. Once you identify one sentence for each paragraph, that the idea that you want to put into that paragraph, then you can start writing. If you do this for a few times, then you don't need to do it anymore because you know that the outline of, of your study or the type of your study, how should it be crafted? Okay, so uh, that is a very good approach. It might take time in a few, uh, in the first three try, but once you get used to it, it's gonna be fast. All right, so uh, you try this at home, so we, we are not gonna do this at home exercise because we have a short session today. So you do it and believe me, you will benefit, benefit a lot. All right, so now the next idea is that clean write-up. Okay, make use of the word software. It has a lot of advantages, but a lot of people, they don't use it. That's why, that's, those are the people that they believe in simplicity. Okay, so write clean. How do you write clean? When you look at this kind of paragraph, you, you can identify some uh, errors, okay? For example, the first one, you see that the word is bringing you some, okay, this is error, so you gotta fix it, okay? So these are some obvious errors that everyone can fix it. Believe me, some people, they don't, they don't look into it. Why? Because they don't change the language of the word to the US or the UK, or they leave it in Malaysia. So that, that when you leave it in Malaysia, English Malaysia, it won't detect that errors, okay? So the good thing is that you gotta make sure that you're putting it in, into the right language of, uh, if it is UK, you need UK, put it in UK. Or if you need US, you put it US, and, and let the word identify this a simple errors that you can identify. Once you did that, there are some more errors that you can find out, right? So where is this punctuation? You could, you, 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 some, some people I've seen a lot, my student work, they, they ignore these simple punctuations, okay? Or the running paragraphs, or you look at this, literature review started with the risk management and then coming with the studies on insurance industry. These two are the soft section of the literature review. So you have to make it standard, okay? If, you need, if the journal is requiring to put a number, you gotta put a number. That makes your, your uh, article, the, the manuscript clear for the reviewer, okay? Don't make the paragraph one to be uh, justified, the other one not justified. So make everything standard, okay? Uh, that's about the errors that you can simply uh, find out. You can get the help from software like Grammarly, that's uh, the free version of, as it is available, or White Smoke, that White Smoke is also available for free for academician, okay? So you can find the free version if you look carefully. And this software, you can, you can make use of it. It's, it's, it's really useful. All right, so I would like to uh, have uh, another question for you. Could you please scan this one? Or go to ahanslides.com dash F3A81. Okay, so uh, go to ahanslide, A-H-A slides.com slash F3A81. Or you can use your phone, you just scan it and then it will directly uh, go to this uh, link.
Um, it seems participation limit exceeded. We just check, I just checked the link that you shared. I'm not oh. sure. Yeah. Is it? Oh, I did not. I think. Or maybe F three A eight one F three A eight one. Yeah. Succeeded, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's continue. Um, so a lot of people are checking the manuscript before the submit before um, sending to the journal. That's a good. Oh, practice. now it's okay. Sorry. Okay. No. All right. For those that they let the supervisor to find the error, that's a not a good approach. Uh, believe me, they mind it. Sometimes uh, they would like to, uh, to read the content, not to do the English editing for you or uh, formatting for you, all right? Um, not a lot of people have the uh, capacity to hire the English editor or proofreader. So it's always good to check even before sending to the English editor. So the English editor can go into the structure of your sentences instead of um, changing the uh, simple grammatical or formatting errors for you. All right. Um, so let's, let's go on. So um, checking is important. All right. So I, I, I know that not every day is a writing day. So I, I had the same problem. But I didn't want to waste the time. Okay, when my brain was too tired to write, I was checking other things: the quotation, the bibliography, the grammar, punctuation, design, artwork. All right, so playing with your data, or do whatever that you can feel that you're making a progress. Okay, so just don't let the day, especially if you're a PhD student, don't let the day to be wasted. Just do something and let the work to be. Um, moving on. All right. Another point is that you got to get someone beside you. Okay. That supervisor is just your supervisor. Okay. It's, it's, it's good that you have your supervisor as a partner, but usually senior academicians, they are not doing the writing with you, especially if you need publication beside your uh, PhD work, if you're doing a PhD. Okay, so you need someone that is working alongside with you or someone that can feel you. So what I was doing during a PhD, I had someone that, uh, during, in, in our PhD room, I had someone that we were sharing the concern together. So we were getting the advice from each other. So that was a great thing is that we're working together. Also, I had someone else that I was working uh, on research with, and then we have completed um, more than 10 manuscripts on that three, uh, on the three years of um, the, the PhD, okay? So uh, having someone can help you to progress faster. So get someone, and it, it would be great that you're doing in the same, you're working on the same field. So you can share the research, you can just partner on, in the research work that can help you a lot, okay? So teamwork is always the best way of excellent achievement, believe me. All right, so prepare your own checklist. So that's one of the things that uh, we were doing in, during our PhD. This is also the things that once you do it a few times, you get used to it, you don't need it anymore. But if you're an early career researcher, so you have to prepare something that can remind you every day that what are the important things that you have to check when you're doing your work. Okay, for example, um, I have a checklist one, two, and three. Okay, so now starting with the one is the general items, the general questions that I'm going to ask myself, like uh, why the domain that I'm working on is important. So this must be reflected in your study. Okay, why it is important. So why you're doing that kind of manuscript. So who are some of the best known scholars? You have to know them. You have to know that. Uh, what are these guys that are working in your field? And then uh, you will admire them. You have to check their works. You have to see what they're doing. You have to see what is the recent research that they're doing. Or what are the leading journals that I said earlier? So these journals, you have to identify them and then check the, uh, the recent issues. Sometimes they put a special issue that can help you to get into the journal faster or the methodology that are most frequently used. So you have to know them. If that can help you to support the methodology of your own study, 
So let's say, for example, the methodology that you're going to do is less used comparatively. Okay, so then you can use that justification to use that type of method methodology. All right, or what are the uh, frequent research question? Or in checklist two, you, you, you can just move, you can prepare your own. It doesn't mean that you have to follow this, all right? But you can prepare your own based on um, the question that I have, or you can also search in the internet. There are a lot of uh, checklists for um, research practices. Or the thesis statement, is it concise and clear? Did I follow the outline that I prepared earlier? Did I miss anything? If I missed, why did I miss it? Maybe it was not important. So you have to ask yourself this question. The argument, are they logic? Okay, you, they, are they uh, in a logical sequence? Or the sources, did you cite the sources? I've seen a lot of um, students, they put this, they, uh, important points, all right, or the facts and figures that they don't put any citation on it, all right. So this is uh, actually the act of uh, plagiarism, even if you're um, rephrasing the sentence. Have I proved that the thesis with this uh, supporting, uh, strong supporting argument, okay? The intention must be very clear. Or the checklist three, move deeper into the um, writing. The, the, the type of writing, the English, the uh, sequence, the um, if the uh, flow of the write-up is managed rightly, okay, um, or the formatting of your text. So these are the things that you can prepare for yourself and make sure that the manuscript that you have written is free of error. All right, so now I'm going to introduce some tools that can help you okay, to, to achieve this um, being neat and clean faster in a more efficient way. So uh, some of you are using the reference management software, but some are not using it. I know that a lot of people are using a word processor, okay, to, um, to arrange the references, but Word is not going to help you that much. And it's not convenient because when you prepare a manuscript, um, and you submitted a journal, let's say you don't have a reference management software, you prepare it with your hard work, with your, um, you, you prepare it by your own, all right? So manually, you, you check the style of the journal, that journal, let's say, require you to put it into APA with that particular specification. So you prepare it by your own, and then let's say it takes you a few hours, right? And then you submit it to the journal, next day you get rejected. So you gotta target the next journal, right? So when you target the next journal, the other journal require a different format. So you have to spend another uh, few hours to prepare that. But Mendeley or Ennet can help you to do that job very quickly, okay? And some, uh, there are other uh, reference management software, but uh, for me, Ennet is the best, okay? The software can help you to be in control. Okay, you can create a library that can be useful forever. If you're, for example, I have a library, uh, let's say on network D, okay, so uh, that's a data envelope analysis type of methodology for evaluating the efficiency. So I have a library with that name. So since I'm working, um, since 2013, 14, that was working on this topic, I've created this library. So this library is now, I uh, contain more than 400 articles. So whenever I want to do any kind of study related to that network DEA, I use that library. So it's useful forever, right? Until the time that I'm working on this topic, I can use it. And then the time management, it can help you a lot. So you can change the format of the references by just one click. It's easy, all right? It's not that difficult to uh, work with. And then you can impress your examiner or reviewer or whoever is checking, they can see that you're, you're providing them with a clean work. All right, so um, scan this and let me see um, how many of you are using it or uh, you're using a different uh, platform to use, manage your references. Again, it's ahaslikes.com and then three, uh, triple E and three. Or you scan it, you can get into it faster. I hope there is no limitation like I say this time.
Okay, using Mendeley or Anode, it depends on your institution. Usually uh, in Malaysia, most of the universities, they have subscribed um, either Mendeley or uh, Anode. So uh, whichever you use, you're good to go. So I see that uh, two people, they said that they try to find it difficult to use uh, reference management software. You use it once, twice, it's going to be a bit hard to get, uh, get into, but then once you got it, it's going to be very easy. Okay. Uh, believe me, it's not that difficult. Um, the, uh, most of the universities, the library, they provide um, the workshop on how to use Mendeley or um, the um, N. So you try to get and learn it. It takes you maybe two hours to learn but you're safe for your rest of your academic life. I don't use reference management software. I use Word, uh, Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is not a reliable, if you're using Microsoft Word, it's not a reliable uh, software for managing references. It's not designed for that, right? So um, you, will, you, will have, uh, you will be in trouble if you're using Microsoft Word. Um, to manage your references. You can input the references, but it's not that helpful, all right? So a lot of people are using Mendeley. I assume that your institution has subscribed to Mendeley, but both of these two, as I said, they're good uh, software to use. All right, so I'll proceed with the next. Another software that is very useful is DT Search. A lot of academicians, they don't know about D DT Search. It's, it's a software that can help you uh, to search within uh, the documents. Uh, I believe that there are some people like myself that they save the documents in their PC, all right? Uh, I, I search a document, I save them in specific folders. For example, I put one into, uh, I name it a DEA folder network, and then I, I throw uh, like, 20, 30, or 100 articles in it, and then I have another folder which is called uh, liberalization, and then I throw 100 uh, articles in there. So um, it's like I have 300 documents, and then I remember that uh, when I want to do, a, when I'm doing a writing, let's say in a literature review, I remember that I've read something about whatever, network DEA um, in the insurance industry in Malaysia, but I can't recall what was the article. I can't recall uh, who was the writer even to search in, on the net. So, but I know that I have saved the document, okay? So DT search can help you to uh, search the uh, folders, that, uh, the folders that you identify in your PC. And then um, with, with the keywords that you remember, I remember the keywords, so I put into the keyword, I search, uh, and then uh, you can find the article of your interest. For example, uh, that's the interface of the uh, software. So you have, um, once you, you have to index, I'm not going to teach you about the software, but I'm introducing it. So uh, once you index the folders, the desired folder of yours in the PC, uh, you have you will have this uh, box to put into the keywords that, that you remember, all right? And then you start searching. Once you search, you will get the list of articles with that keywords in the specific folders that you have identified. And it gives you the score, like uh, this article hits um, this many numbers of um, the, the, the search term, all right? And then you can easily... Uh, open the article, it will give you the uh, PDF reader also in this uh, area. And then you can read the article here and easily um, get down with your work. This is a very good software to save time. I found it when I was searching for an article in my PC. Okay, so um, the point is, uh, if, if you want to buy it, uh, it's expensive, it's not that cheap. But then for academic use, you can find it. All right, so another software is Visio. Some of you might, uh, you might have heard about this Visio. It can grab attention when you use Visio. It's a very good software to draw a beautiful um, kind of frameworks or um, not to say chart, where it's all, all mostly about frameworks, how you want to draw the framework, okay? So this is a framework that has been run by 
Word, Microsoft Word. It's not bad, all right, but it takes time. It takes time to draw uh, this kind of uh, framework in the Word. You have to align them, and alignment, it won't that, uh, be that much nice, all right? Uh, but it's possible, but again, it's about time management, okay? You might, a professional might take uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes to, to draw this kind of things, but then when it comes to uh, Visio, you can try such a thing, all right? Uh, and then that might take you 10 minutes because this software, it's the Microsoft software, it is designed for this. So it gives you the flexibility to draw the things, to draw the boxes, to, to align the boxes uh, in a nice way, all right? Or this one is one of the earlier works that I did. It is, um, I love it. Also, you can also draw uh, the, uh, this kind of milestones, all right? So this is also the milestone that most of the, uh, most of PhD students, they have to uh, present this to the um, board of examiners or in uh, at the earlier stage of their PhD to their faculties, okay? So it gives you a lot of uh, different um, samples to work on. So Visio, some university, they have subscribed Visio, um, but then if it is not subscribed, you can upgrade and get it for the desktop version at 21 ringgit a month. Or you can also use uh, eDraw Max. That's a software, um, this is designed for the Mac users. Uh, when, when I switch my windows to Mac, so uh, because I love Visio, so I, I, I was looking for another substitute and I found that this eDraw Max is actually uh, the, the Visio for the Mac, okay? So that gives you the same options. It's very similar interface with the, with the Visio. So you can download this eDraw Max and then use it same as what you do with the Visio. All right, so another thing, I know a lot of you are using it, uh, and then uh, you're using it actually frequently, right, for the presentation, for whatever you do. So PowerPoint is a very uh, popular software, so everyone is using it. But then you can use the PowerPoint more wisely and then um, prepare a beautiful presentation and impress your audience, okay? You can draw this in a PowerPoint, so, I'm not saying um, to use this, for example, you look at here. So this is the animation type that I use in PowerPoint to uh, prepare my slides for um, my final presentation in my PhD. So you can see the uh, movement. So that movement grabs attention. It will impress your examiner once you're presenting. I'm not saying to use this in every slide of yours because it will be time taking but for the framework, for the, for the slides that are very important to, to you and you want to impress the examiners, so the best thing is that to use the um, animations of the PowerPoint, okay? So that gives um, a, a very good picture of you. All right, so uh, we have another question. So uh, please scan this one or go to hansslides.com and then dash, I suppose this is, I, E, 6, D, uh, 8, or is 1, I'm not sure. So uh, you may scan this one and get into the question. So we have about 20 minutes, so uh, not much slide left. Okay. So scan this one or go to this link. So let's see how many we have now. So uh, we got three people never heard of this year it would be useful. So you got to search for it and then I'm, I'm pretty sure you can find um, the, uh, if your institution has not subscribed, perhaps you can search internet, you can find the Visio. Okay, so you believe that, uh, three people believe that PowerPoint is doing the job, so I don't need the Visio, right? 
So uh, you may do that, but this is again about time management, uh, as I said, and then providing something that is free of error, okay? So that is totally up to you, all right? And uh, Microsoft Word, and, and let me tell you that PowerPoint does a much better job than Microsoft Word in drawing. Even if the latest, you're using the late, latest Microsoft, PowerPoint is much better than the uh, Microsoft Word. Okay, so six people have never, I think a lot of people are not using Visio, so it's not that, uh, I think, popular among academicians, but uh, this is something that, yes. Dr. Pedro, just to share with you that sometimes the link doesn't work. For example, I tried a few times, I, and I oh, get this... an error that the session doesn't exist. Just, oh, yeah, okay. so it is maybe the reason that you don't get a high number. It's all right. It's all right. I, I, I just uh, I need to get an average of what mm. people are doing. So that's okay. that, thank you. That surface. All right. Okay. So another software that I'm pretty sure a lot of people they don't know about, but I'm exploring it since my PhD, and then uh, I'm going to teach this one also in this semester for my for our uh, bachelor students. That called Tableau. All right, so this is uh, uh, useful for the uh, those that they are working in marketing or finance or accounting um, or, or anyone that is working with data, all right? So if you're using data in your research, secondary data mostly, so that would be a great way to present your um, result or the data of yours in a uh, graphs that are unique okay so you can you can do it with Excel but then this software provides you with something that is much much better all right so you can see this one is example of heat map this is interface of Tableau this is a very um, now has become a very famous software all right so this is another stock tracking all right so segregated by the year so this is kind of um, to me is very beautiful and then uh, this is one of my work for my study because I was using secondary data. And then I had a chart full of these uh, graphs used, um, drawn by Tableau. And then uh, that, that chapter was one of my winning points in my uh, thesis. This is a tree map, all right? So uh, this is also, this all work as done by, by Tableau, all right? So it provides you with the, um, let's say for, for my case, it's a GDP average, all right? So I'm providing with the uh, size of the GDP average, okay, for each uh, sector of the economy. Or you, you can see this, is, this is an, um, a table, but it's not a normal table, all right? It's a table that is giving you much more information than a conventional table that you uh, use it in your research. So that's just, uh, this is kind of convenient to read, all right? provides you with more information, or you can see that this is another uh, area chart drawn by Tableau. Mm -hmm. Or this is stack bar adjustable by the size. This is a kind of a unique um, uh, bar chart that can be done by Tableau only. All yep. right, so um, or the maps, yes. There's something to add. Um, yeah, Tableau is one of the most commonly used software packages in the industry as well. Many yes. of large companies use Tableau and it's really amazing. And yes. these are the very, very good examples that you are sharing. Yep. Yeah, very large companies that they have a lot of data, big data, yes. they use Tableau. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and one of the good thing is that it's not being used uh, much in research. Although it can be used, and then once you want, when you want to present the result of your study, it can be used, and then you can provide a very nice uh, charts and graphs. And beside that, uh, if you are an academician that is uh, teaching finance or teaching accounting or marketing, you can encourage the students. So this is what I'm doing it now. You can encourage the students to yeah, uh, be should. more prepared. And then, yeah. um, in fact, the once you um, complete the Tableau session, you're provided with an exam, which is not that expensive. 
it's about 100 USD and then you can get a certificate which is called a desktop especially that certificate is one of the useful certificate if you want to join industry let's say um, you complete your bachelor degree in finance or accounting and you want to join the industry so that can provide you with a good uh, platform so uh, good thing is that Tableau is free for the students okay it's 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 not a cheap software it's very expensive but then tableau uh, software providers they have uh, made it free for the students all right for in order to grab more uh tableau users all right so uh if your students you grab the opportunity and then uh you try to get a yearly license with your student id you can renew your yearly license and then use a tableau uh, freely or if you're academician you can request uh, for Tableau as well, you can you, you will get a free uh, yearly license because the purpose of academy uh, academicians are to teach, right? So the idea is that if academicians are known, uh, they, they know the software, so they can buy the students, and then students can um, use the software. All right. So this is the world of data. If you don't know how to work with data, because a lot of big data users, they use Tableau. Tableau is very strong in terms of organizing, arranging your data. If you have a law, large rows of data, so you can use Tableau to organize and arrange. So you gotta be um, data literate, all right? So scan the um, in QR code here, or uh, like I said, let me know if you can use this one again, FF0DA. Um, it would, this would be my last slide, and then we uh, let the remaining time to be for the Q and A.